Hi, this is Melissa with A Creative Dream with Melissa, and today we're going to show you how to do a really awesomely cool card. It's a movable card, so you're going to love it. Um, first, I'm going to show you what you need, and then I will show you what you're going to make. It's kind of like reverse psychology, like all these awesome things that you're going to need to do um, and make or use to make this stuff, and then you get to see the awesome outcome afterwards. Yeah, kind of backwards, but anyway, it is awesome, and you're going to love it. First, I want to show you. Um, what you're going to be needing as far as you're going to need a card base, you're going to need some uh, colored paper, you're going to need red paper, and you're going to need some white paper to stamp on. You're going to need some adhesive, of course, because that's a no-brainer. And you're going to need a stamp block, of course, because that is what you would need for a stamp, of course. And you will need um, some ink, some black ink. I usually use Tuxedo Memento ink, Tuxedo Black Memento ink. I have two uh, chameleon pens. They are YL2 and BV4. We have some scissors. We have some white twine. We have an awesome die set from Technique Tuesday. It's like a shade uh, die. And we also have this fantastic stamp set here. And I'm sure, I'm sure, so sure, so sure that you will love this. And this is Angels with Autism, right here. And um, this awesome stamp set and others you can find at www.acreativejourneywithmelissa.com or www.acjwm.com. You would want to use this stamp set, especially for Autism Awareness Month. And April is Autism Awareness Month, so make sure you educate yourself and make sure you educate your kids, your grandkids, your friends, Everybody you can, because it's really important that people know about autism, know what different effects um, can happen, how um, people that have autism can be uh, affected by loud noises, bright lights, and different things that we may not actually be aware of that may bother them. So let's try to be kind and patient and understanding too. So with that, you have all of the supplies you're going to need right here. Um, but now I'm going to show you what you're making. So let me put this stuff away, hopefully in an organized manner. So when I actually create the card with you, I'll know where it is. <laughs> um, funny, I know. Anyway, not really. I just tell myself that. Um, so we're going to need all this great stuff. But first, I'm going to show you exactly what we're making. So I'm going to put everything aside. And we're making this. This adorable little card with a shade on it. Isn't that cute? You think, wow, I wonder what's under the shade. Well, funny you ask. We're going to take these cool little pieces of twine and we're going to pull them up like so. And look, you're awesome. How do you like that? Notice the silly spelling? That's because it's for autism awareness. But you know what? Even if you are not directly affected by autism, you could still use this awesome stamp for someone who's awesome. Don't you think? I think so too. At any rate, so this is what I'm going to teach you how to make. It's not too hard. It just has some pieces to it. And this is how easy it is. Just like so and you just pull it down and you pull it up. That's it. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so that's what we have here. So to start, I'm gonna do the easiest parts first and then we'll move into the not as easy. None of it's really difficult, but it could definitely be um, maybe a little bit challenging, but that's okay. We're good. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take out the stamp that we used, and it's this one, okay? And this is the sheet, this is my sheet of stamps. This is, I keep them in an envelope and um, just keep them in there because it's easier to grab, so I have them all together. And then once I'm done with that, I'll stick it right back on my sheet, put it back in my envelope. So with that, if you're not familiar with photopolymer stamps, they are clear, people call them clear, they call them plastic, they call them uh, all kinds of different stuff, acrylic. Um, these are actually photopolymer. It's important that they are photopolymer so they are um, non-yellowing and they're, uh, the way that they're created, the actual uh, type of um, material that they are, are naturally sticky. So 
if you find that your stamps, as long as they're photopolymer, are not sticky, you just take some warm water and soap and you wash them off and presto magico, they stick again. So you should be good with that. I know sometimes people say, oh, my stamps don't you know, work or they're not sticking, stuff like that. Well, that would be one of the reasons if they're a little bit dirty, which it happens. Or the second reason is they might be, may not be photopolymer and they may not be um, uh, the best quality, so therefore they will not stay sticky. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and ink up our stamp like so. And we're going to just put it right on the bottom right here. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe that off. I'm going to replace it on the sheet like I said, like so. And then I'm going to pull off your awesome so we can repeat that awesome little sentiment we had on the other one. We're going to ink this up. We're going to put that right above the um, image that we stamped. Looks good. I'm going to clean that off. Stick that right back on the set again, like I said. And then I'm just going to put it in my envelope because that's how I store them. So then I have them all ready to go for next time. So we have that. Now I'm going to take out my YL2 and BV4 chameleon pens. And I'm doing that because I'm going to be coloring my autism awareness puzzle piece and the ribbon. So I'm going to start with, I'll start with the yellow. So we're just going to color in that ribbon. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm not doing any highlights. I'm just coloring them. These markers or pens, whichever you want to call them, are awesome. I love them. Awesome. Get it? Ha huh? Awesome. Um, I love them because they are your forever marker or forever pen. You can replace the nibs. You can add ink to them. They are refillable. You can create your own custom colors if you want to get some blank ones. There's a whole bunch of really great stuff with them. I love them. I think they're fantastic. I also have other alcohol-based markers, which these are alcohol-based if I didn't make that clear before. And um, I love them. I think they're fantastic. And in doing so, I like to color with them. So I like to just use them as a regular marker, not only, um, not just for like highlighting and all different kinds of stuff like that. I could highlight the dude, but I'm not going to for a couple of reasons. For one, I don't think you want to see me color that long. And for two, because um, I want to get to the nitty gritty of the actual project to make sure that you have time to watch it and time to understand it and are not watching an hour-long video. I know that your time is as valuable as any, sometimes more than others, and it's really very important to me, and I appreciate the fact that you come here and you check out my videos and you watch them and you encourage me and support me, and I also um, somehow creatively inspire you, which honors me for sure. So with that, I don't want to sit here in color for another 20 minutes showing you different highlights and things since the actual creation I'm doing here is more about the shade. So I've colored that. We're done with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my card base like so and I have my paper already pre-cut but I think I might cut it a little bit more on the side so I'm just going to take out my trimmer so typically you would not need your trimmer, but for me, I think I'm going to trim it just a little bit more. I just want a little sliver off, I think. That's what it's calling for me, so that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think that's, well, maybe a little bit more than that. Oops. Perfect. I think we're good. So I've got that done. Oops, <laughs> I thought I did. I'm good, I did, did it too fast and didn't cut it all the way. So I'll just use my handy dandy scissors. Yes, that's a Blue's Clues reference. For those of you that have kids like I do, 18 and 20, they watch Blue's Clues a lot. And I love Blue's Clues, so I would watch it with them. It wasn't like a baby mechanism, babysitting mechanism. It was a, oh, this is such a cool show. It was educating me too. Um, I, uh, I loved Blue's Clues and um, plan on buying the videos so that someday if I have grandkids, I'll be able to share that awesome show with them too. 
So with that said, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, put this and adhere that piece of paper on, centered, okay. So that's done. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just put this piece of paper on and I will adhere that too. And notice here on the um, back of the paper that I colored, you see that the ink actually went through. That's because it's an alcohol marker. So you need to make sure that you protect the um, surface in which you're using when you're coloring. I am fortunate this actually is a protected surface, so all I have to do really is to um, wipe it off with alcohol and I'm good. But you want to make sure that that is taken care of because you don't want to ruin anything that may be, you know, like a heirloom or something. Could you imagine? Oh my god, that would be terrible. Anyway, so I'm going to center this best I think it looks good. It throws me off a little bit because I've got the, the colors behind, but I really like the way this looked. I thought it was cool how this really doesn't have this blue in here. It has some shades of blue, and I love the way that it um, brought out all these other colors, but this really stood out because those colors were kind of almost muted in the background. That's what I thought anyway. So, this one's already done. We're going to set both of these aside. Now what I need to do is I need to get out my Sizzix die cut machine. With any luck, I won't break the handle. Yes, I've been known to do that. I believe it's video one, if I'm not mistaken. So if you want to get some entertainment, by all means, check it out, because it is really funny. Um, and surprisingly, I actually continued doing videos after that, because I would have normally had a heart attack had that not actually worked out okay. So here we have the die. Oh, here, let me show you the die. And I have a magnetic um, uh, die cut, <coughs> excuse me, platform, so that's why this goes on so well. But this is the die, and there's another die right here which is like the little cover part for the, the shade. So we're gonna put this right here, like so. And then we're going to take this piece of paper that I already used for the first one for the sample, and we're just gonna continue it on and put this right on top of that. Then we're gonna put this little part right here on top, and then we're gonna run it through. Now I usually like to run it through twice, once on the way in and once on the way out, just to make sure I get it done. Sounds like a lot of mess, doesn't it? But that's the way it's supposed to sound. It's it's the entertainment of us uh, worrying about whether our machine's gonna break and then, oh wow, do we get to buy a new one? But no, we don't. This one's fine. Ooh, it does like to jump quite a bit though. So we're good there. I'm just gonna take this part off right like this, if it'll let me. And then we're gonna take this part off like this if it'll let me, it did, yay. And then I'll put everything else down. I don't need anything else right now. So this is already cut great. I'm just gonna throw that in just for a second so it doesn't go anywhere when I place it down. And we're good. So, so we have this here. And we have this. Now what I just did was I just took my fingernail and I have a, a tool, this tool actually which is really cool. I can use the poker and pull it all out. I can actually brush it all out if you want, which I can do really fast here. And then I'll do that there. So that works, or you can just use your fingernail. And the, this type of thing, it's not that horrible. It's not like with the really, really intricate ones that are a real pain that you have to try to pull out and stuff like that. That's, yeah, that's what we call a pain. At any rate, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna fold these up and down and if you look closely you can see these are little score lines right there that's from the die so I'm just folding along those lines nothing fancy just gonna fold along it's like our own little form of origami today right so we have that now just for the heck of it I'm gonna fold it the other way because I like to make sure that it's super duper folded so I'm going to fold it the other way too. Just to make sure it's folded. And then I'm going to go back and fold it the original way. Now you want to make sure that you don't fold it so much that it ends up ripping. That would be bad. Because these creases are pretty good. So it should work just fine. But it's always better to be safe than sorry. So here we go. 
All right, so we have our little shade, and I'll show you we have this part on the bottom. Here. This is the bottom, and this is the top. You want the top to rest flat, because that's what you're going to adhere on top of your image. And then you're going to put this part on top of it, okay? So, we're going to get our little piece back out here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some adhesive. Um, we're just going to add it to the top part. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me do the easier part first or else I'm really going to be mad at myself. Let's just do the string now, right? Let's do that. So we're just going to squish this all up into like a little paper sandwich, if you will, and decide whatever part you want to be the bottom. And so this is going to be the top. This is going to be the bottom. So you're going to want to go in all of the holes through the top. You're going to push it down in there like so. You're going to pull it. You're going to squish this back down together. You're going to put this back down through the hole. And then you have this. Now what I would do is just kind of make sure that they're about the same length. You have way, way more string than you'll ever need for this project here. But I'd rather have too much than not enough and really mess myself up. So that's what I did. Okay? makes my life easier and that's what I did. So this bottom part will be the bottom of the shade. This top part will be adhered. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. I believe that's what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll switch it around. Hmm. I think I might switch it this way. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. I like it better because I think that's how I did on my sample. So let me make sure. Yes, I did. We're going to do it this way. This is what the this is what it's going to look like. Okay? See that? So, it still works. You could flip it around. You could have it either way, really. But I'm going to have it so that when it goes down, it's not flat. It looks like this. So it will be um, it will be valley, you know, hill valley, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It'll end going down into a valley. Okay? So. Hopefully this makes sense. It will make sense once I do it, I promise. So I'm going to take some adhesive and I'm going to put it right in between these two holes. It's important that I do it in between the holes or else the, it will get stuck and that would be bad. So we're going to go ahead and put some adhesive in between these two holes. We don't want a ton of it, but we want to make sure there's enough to do the job, right? So we have that. I want to show you what that looks like. So you could see clearly there's plenty of room between the string and where it's going. Okay. We got it like this. Looks good. I'm going to push down like so. Okay. And again, just in case, it's not a bad idea to just pull, oops, to pull that up. Make sure it works, looks good, and then we can pull it back down. So that's basically the mechanism of it. Let me show you the side view again because I want to make sure that you understand what we're doing here. Okay, so that's a great side view. And then here is a close-up so you can see what that looks like, okay? So that's basically the mechanics of it. Now we just do the extra stuff to make it look pretty. So you could put a stamp on here if you wanted to. You could do a number of things if you wanted to. Um, what we're going to do, though, is we're just going to go ahead and put some foam right here. These are foam rectangles right next to each other because you want a little bit of uh, uh, um, depth or else it will kind of drag and you don't want to do that. And then I took one of the foam rectangles and cut it in half because I want to make sure that it bypasses the string. So it has this whole area there to make sure that it has space and stuff for the string. So we're good there. Okay. And then we've got this right here. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take off that extra protective paper that's on top of the foam, like so. And now we want this part, this little um, scalloped part going down right here, okay? But first, 
what I do is I make sure that this string is for one lined up straight, okay, and then for two I make sure that this looks good and looks nice and centered and it looks good to me so I'm ready to place it down like so and you push down okay then you're just gonna pull this little baby down like so like that and then what I did is I did bows I did knots I did a whole bunch of different things I would just do some knots unless you want to make a bow and put it on because um, trying to do a bow and not keeping it like a bow is a pain um, speaking from experience actually you know what you could do I might even do this here hold on a second you could do this that would be kind of neat you know sometimes people do that with their um, with their uh, uh, strings for their blinds and stuff like that they like double knot it and bring it back I'm gonna do that although I did do a knot on this side so you can do it either way just like that if you wanted to and you could trim off the excess like this that way you also make sure that you don't cut too much off that you don't have enough for the string to pull it back and it looks a little bit cleaner I think too so that is what it looks like okay so you have this here oops came undone see what I mean it just doesn't like to do what I wanted to do so oh maybe it just doesn't want to do what I wanted to do no matter what we'll just trim that off so you can do it that side or you can do it like this either way just do a little knot like this that looks good too whichever you prefer whatever look you're going for but the coolest part of this whole thing right here is this right here and then you pull that side actually if you have them both at the same time that's really the coolest part <laughs> I grabbed one not the other how you like that now is that not totally cool do we love that or what I love it I think it's fantastic um, on my previous blog post I believe it's um, two before this one I have the information about the die for this I will try to remember to put that in there I believe I have um, it's technique Tuesday I believe it's called shade or something like that I can't remember but I will uh, try to remember to put it in the blog but if not you can go ahead and google it and you'll be able to find it um, but this I just love how that looks because I think that although this looks very nice you could do anything with this but I thought it'd be really cool to have that shocking blue and yellow come out and I thought it really stood out I really love the way that works so with that said I think we completed our little card tutorial what do you think people I think it came out well so I hope and hope 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 that you enjoyed this tutorial I hope and hope hope that I have inspired you to create something that maybe you may not normally feel comfortable doing that's okay that's what gets us creative that's what gets us learning new things about ourselves and that is why it's so important to try different things and and you know educate yourself so with that I'm gonna show you this cute little one closed and show you this cute little one open and I like the way they came out so I am so grateful that you came and um, shared some time with us today. And thank you so much for going on a creative journey with Melissa. And be sure to check out our website and subscribe to our blog and our email and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can enter when any of the prizes that we give away weekly. We give away prizes and then the following week the um, person that won is notify or actually let know. So make sure that you check back because I do not notify people. Um, for a couple of reasons. For one, that's a lot of work and I'm giving away a free item. So I'm hoping that you really want this item and you want to come and check back and see if you want it. So um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for subscribing. And thank you so much for going on a creative journey with Melissa. Have a fantastic day. Thanks. Bye-bye.